Welcome to another edition of the Digital Sports Show right here on islandstats.com. I'm your host, Earl Basted. I'll be doing this show all by myself today as Juggling Jay is off the island. But we have the under-20s return to Bermuda, Nikki Baskin wins his fight, and much, much more in this show. But we'll have more after this message from our sponsor. Bermuda, listen up. D Music is here exclusively for Digicel customers. Open up a world of music at your fingertips and access millions of songs from free. With D Music, you can easily search for your favorite artists and create playlists to fit your lifestyle. Plus, you have the option to download music to your device so you can find a song for any moment, even when offline. D Music comes with one gig of free data to stream and download songs without it impacting your data usage. That's 32 hours worth of music. Visit us in store or online to see how you can get D Music today. The Bermuda Under-20 national team arrived back at the L.F. Wade International Airport on Sunday night after they bowed out of the CONCACAF Championships in Costa Rica. All right, Kyle, you guys uh, recently, well, you're back tonight from Costa Rica. Take us through the experience uh, from a coaching standpoint. Yeah, obviously it was a fantastic um, opportunity for us as, um, as a country, but coaching-wise, I think... Coaches learned a lot on that tour. We were constantly thinking. I mean, the level was very high. And leading up to picking teams, we went through many different scenarios. So it was very interesting. And um, we were definitely challenged tactically from each uh, country that we played against. Looking at it, the fact that um, this was our first time at this level, um, and obviously we go through a lot of baby steps as we grow. Um, evaluate the players' overall performance over the three matches played. Well, when we look at all three matches, I think we stayed in the game for long periods. Well, we went behind on, in two occasions. But when we look at around the 60 minute of every game, we were still in it. You know, I know the El Salvador game, we um, let in two quick goals and it ended up being 3-1, but we were hoping that we could be in the game for long, long periods, which we were, and we tend to finish the game quite strong. I mean, all three games, I thought we finished really strong. All right, well, you have a spokesman on behalf of the team. <laughs> Looking at looking at the players, uh, and and well, looking at our team, and then looking at the uh, the opponents, how do you think you you we fared player-wise matching up against those the three countries we we took on? I feel their players were a lot technical because meaning they had more professionals in their team, but our team we stood a good chance. We I felt we was equal because at the end of the day, the games played on the field. What do you think, from a player standpoint, we need to work on to improve ourselves to play at a higher tempo when we get to this level next time around? I think our stamina was good. I think technically we need to work on that because they were technically better than us. But overall, we were pretty equal. Looking at guys coming behind you guys and even those guys just in front of you, what's some of the things you want to be able to tell them to look out for because hopefully we'll be back playing at this level on a regular basis. So what do we need to, what do you need to be talking to these guys who are the fringe players and the guys just above you guys that didn't make this team? They need to stay, they need to stay in and work hard, keep their heads up if they don't get picked, and there's always a chance, your chance will come. On Saturday night, inside the Fairmont Southampton, Nicky Bascom improved to 6-0 and on his fighting career. Nikki Bascom improved to 6-0 on Saturday night inside the Fairmont Southampton Princess after he won by unanimous decision over Iwan Azor from Trinidad. Bascom slowed his opponent down in the second round with some measured body shots, something Bascom was pleased with. Definitely. That's part of my style, you know. Um, I just try to be patient and, and look for my openings. And like I said before, I spar with self pulls all the time, so I have an idea how to fight them. Um, and I, I want to thank my sparring partners, um, Tyler Christopher and Andre Lim, because they're both southpaws and the up-and-coming fighters, and they pushed me through this camp. 
Meanwhile, the night got underway with Campbell Patton from Canada moving to three wins, two losses, and three draws after he defeated Bermuda San Charles Association fighter Samir Fakwan by unanimous decision. Krista Dyer was also out of the Bermuda San Charles Association. She defeated Ashley Cafu from Canada by unanimous decision. Matthew Tannock, fighting out of the 40 Rigo gym, recorded a technical knockout one minute and 49 seconds in the second round, defeating Cyril Witter from the BSA JCB School of Art. Antonio Paranchief, out of the controversy gym, defeated Mark Pryor from the Bermuda San Charles Association in his first fight on unanimous decision in what was voted the fight of the night. Courtney Dublin out of the police gym picked up a majority decision victory over Jalen Robert fighting out of the 40 Rigo gym. Tyler Christopher fighting out of the 40 Rigo gym defeated Gilbert Vargas from Baltimore by unanimous decision and DeAndre Morris fighting out of the Bermuda Karate Institute defeated Othneo Gordon from Canada by unanimous decision. Well, Flora Duffy made it four wins in a row at the Xterra South Africa Championships. For the fourth year in a row, Flora Duffy has been crowned the Fed Health Xterra South African Championship Women's Champion. Duffy obliterating the field to win her fourth Grabo title. Duffy clocked a time of 2.39 even, finishing 16th overall, with the next female finisher, Mary Rabi, finishing more than five minutes out clocking 2.45.31. And rounding out the podium was Rachel Kramer, who clocked 2.54.11. Duffy recorded a time of 22.18 during the swim course. She then covered the bike course in a time of 1.18.49 before closing out with a time of 55.56 on the run course. There was a change at the top of the Premier Division and two teams were promoted from the First Division as the Bermuda Football Association's Premier and First Division League season continued over the weekend. A total of nine combined Premier and First Division matches took place over the weekend with a total of 33 goals scored. Today we take a look at the leading goal scorers and the standings. Robin Hood are the league leaders with 35 points following their 1-0 win over previous league leaders PHC who are now in second place with 34 points. North Village Rams are in third with 32 points but they have a game in hand. Ian Koch from the Boulevard Blazers is the league leading goal scorer with 19 while Angelo Simmons from the Dannytown Hornets is in second with 16 goals. Shane Hollis from the North Village Rams has 12 on the season while Sequoia Robinson from the PHC Zebras has found the back of the net 10 times. Young Mayor Social Club and Crossroads have been promoted to the Premier Division following 1-0 victories over the weekend. Social Club defeated Wolves 1-0 and Crossroads defeated St. David's 1-0. Young Men's Social Club lead the league with 39 points while Crossroads are in second with 37. St. George's Colts are in third on goal difference over St. David's with 24 points. Donovan Thompson from St. George's Colts is now the league leading goal scorer with 16 goals. Tyrell Burgess from BAA has 12. Clay Darrell from Young Men's Social Club, Dante Oldboy from St. David's have been joined by Jerron Dickinson from St. George's Colts with 10 goals each. Meanwhile, Bermuda's overseas players over in England continued also over the weekend. Andrew Ayew came off the bench to rescue a point for 10 men West Ham in their 1-1 draw at Watford. Bermudian goalkeeper Nathan Trott traveled with the West Ham team as the third goalkeeper. Huddersfield, without Nikki Wells, due to an ankle injury, learned a harsh lesson as their juggernaut towards the top two of the Sky Bet Championship started with a 1-1 draw at Barnsley. Huddersfield, who have been defying expectations all season, should be celebrating a seventh successive league win for the first time since 1982, but they only had Michael Halfley's header to show for a game they dominated and created endless months of chances. They eventually paid the price when Marley Watkins' late leveler earned Barnsley a draw and ensured Huddersfield missed the chance to close the gap on Newcastle to three points. Connor McAllen scored a hat-trick as Oxford's pursuit of a place in the playoff gathered momentum with a 4-0 win over Rae Simons and his relegation-struggling teammates Chesterfield. Simons, who started the match on the bench, came into the game in the 81st minute. Portsmouth narrowed the gap between themselves and Reggie Lamb and his challenging promotion teammates, Carlisle United, to three points after they recorded a 3-0 win at Brunton Park. The Caribbean Equestrian Association's dressage show, the Bermuda Leg, took place at the National Equestrian Center on Visa Street on Sunday. 
The Bermuda Dressage Group hosted the 2017 Caribbean Equestrian Association's Dressage Competition at the National Equestrian Centre on Vesey Street yesterday. The Caribbean Equestrian Association's Dressage Competition was staged a day late after torrential rain and high winds resulted in the event being cancelled on Saturday. Casey Truen and Della Vega received a score of 66.324% in the first level Test 3 class, while Christian Truen and Roslyn were first competing in the training level Test 3 with a score of 69 point seven seven four percent Dej Manners, representing Franklin Pierce University, and Tahira Butterfield, representing the University of Albany, competed over the weekend and were shining lights for their schools. Senior Dej Miners took home the bronze medal in the 800-meter final, earning all New England honors to lead Franklin Pierce University men's track and field team on the second and final day of the NEIC AAA championships held at the Reggie Lewis Center. Minus's bronze performance came in one of the most competitive events of the entire meet. His third place time of 149.10 marked the third time this winter he has met the NCAA championship automatic qualifying standard for the event. Tahira Butterfield concluded competing in the 2017 American East Indoor Track and Field Championships at the Boston University Track Center. On day two, Butterfield competed in two finals following preliminary wins. Butterfield finished fourth in the women's 60-meter dash final, clocking a time of 7.72. She would next finish fifth in the women's 200-meter dash final, stopping the clock in a time of 24.87, which was faster than her qualifying time. Elin and Elijah Daly continue to impress over in Canada with outstanding performances in the pool. Elin Daly competed in the Ontario Winter Festival, winning six individual girls, 11-year-old events, and claiming five new Bermuda records. Daly touched the wall first in a time of 26.62 during the 50-meter freestyle final, breaking her own record of 26.94 set back on December 17, 2016. She also swam to victory in the 100-meter freestyle, stopping the clock in a time of 58.34. She would break her own record of 59.07. She set back on December 4th, 2016. With a time of 106.62, Daly won the 100-meter backstroke, and she broke her own record of 107.41, set back on December 2nd, 2016. Daly then clocked a time of 117.14 on her way to winning the 100-meter breaststroke. Daly recorded a time of 105 flat on her way to winning the 100-meter butterfly, and in doing so, she broke her own record of 107.02, set back on June 18, 2016. During the individual medley 200-meter race, Daly clocked a winning time of 2.23.82. That time broke her own record of 2.28.47, set back on December 3, 2016. Elijah Daly also competed in the Winter Festival, winning six individual boys' 9- and 10-year-old events. Daly won the 50-meter boys freestyle, clocking a time of 29.31. He also won the boys 100-meter freestyle in a time of 103.11. Daly would touch the wall with a winning time of 4.53.99 during the boys 400-meter freestyle, and then he would clock a winning time of 109.71 during the boys 100-meter butterfly. Daly would win the 100-meter individual medley, stopping the clock in a time of 112.85. He would then close out the meet, winning the 200-meter individual medley, clocking a time of 2.36.81. Open up a world of music at your fingertips and access millions of songs from free with D-Music, exclusively from Digicel. With D-Music, you can stream and download songs and create playlists of your favorite artists to fit your lifestyle. Whether you're working out at the gym, getting ready for a Friday night, or just chilling at home, D-Music comes with one gig of free data to stream and download songs without it impacting your data usage. That's 32 hours worth of music. Visit us in-store or online to see how you can get D-Music today. Tyler Smith continues to impress at the SWAC tournament representing her school, Jackson State, while the Bermuda Lawn Tennis Association has announced the Junior Davis Cup team that will represent Bermuda over in El Salvador. Tyler Smith picked up two more wins on her way to helping her Jackson State women's tennis teammates defeat Alcorn State 4-3 as the Southwestern Atlantic Conference SWAC women's tennis tournament continued. Smith playing in the number one single spot defeated her opponent in straight sets 6-4, 6-4. Smith would then team up with her doubles partner Lucia Silu in the number two spot and they won their match 7-6. Meanwhile, the Bermuda Lawn Tennis Association has named the 2017 Junior Davis Cup team that will represent Bermuda in El Salvador from March 27th to April 2nd. 
The Bermuda team consists of Trey Mallory, Tariq Simons, Scott Redman, and Ricky Mallory as the national team director, traveling as the coach. Simons and Redman recently competed in the trial matches to secure the other two positions on the team, joining Trey Mallory, who had already solidified his position after acquiring ITF, International Junior Circuit Points. Simons, who has recently been living and training in Jamaica, was able to fly back to Bermuda and participate in the trials thanks to generous sponsorship. The Junior Davis Cup event in El Salvador is a 16 and under event with representation from 21 countries including Aruba, Bahamas, Barbados, Bermuda, Costa Rica, Curaçao, Dominican Republic, El Salvador, Grenada, Guatemala, Guyana, Haiti, Honduras, Jamaica, Nicaragua, Panama, Puerto Rico, St. Lucia, Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Kevin Smith rolled back the time as he won the utility 5K road race that finished at the National Sports Center. Kevin Smith and Gil Lindsay are the 2017 Utilities 5K road race male and female champions. Smith crossed the line in a time of 18.25. Shafton Hall was second in 18.59. And Dennis Mbenzi was third in 19.28. Lindsay finished fifth overall, clocking a time of 19.38. Brianna Mendez was the second female finisher and eighth overall in a time of 21.31. And Laura Keyes was the third female finisher and 13th overall, clocking 24.40. We had a chance to speak with Smith after his victory. Well, Kevin, you're just out for a, a, a Sunday stroll. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> running, running this race, what, what, what memories does it bring back of, of ben, when you were dominating the race scene? Uh, how, how hard it is now. <laughs> the memory, I guess, is like, man, I remember back in the day, come through in 18, 19 minutes, you know, it was a woman up face, so, but you know, it's relative, you know, I'm a 50 year old now, so I'm a senior master, so it's great to be out here to be able to compete, you know, enjoy the weather, and, you know, no one showed up today, so that's great, we got a little victory, you know. So, you know, even just to be able to run, because, you know, four years ago, I couldn't even run, you know, so, you know, thanks to God and the blessings, you know, and different people that helped me along here, you know, I'm able to run again, so. To enjoy the freedom of going out and run a 15 mile and you know do a 5k and enjoy it is you know that's the blessing you tend to talk to a lot of the other athletes who are also out running giving them advice what are some of the messages you're giving them or information you're giving them just to encourage them to keep going oh this is just much as running if you know i'm watching for the last few races and so i am up today except today i'll give him a little chat and so you know it's just amazing how he's faster than he thinks just a little knowledge a little wisdom that I, you know i have no problem offering him and, you know, that's to be able to pass on something to see someone else run faster. It's a blessing also within itself. So that, you know, excites me to see the slower runners be able to pick themselves up and, you know, bring their best out because it's relative, you know. I tell people all the time, my best is my best. Your best is no different than my best. It's just your best. So go for your best. So to pass it on, you know, I think that's something that, you know, we ought to do as, you know, the upper runners. We've seen you return for the Bermuda Day Half Marathon Derby. Will you be lining up on the line to come out of St. George's this year, maybe? No, if I say alone with the health is great, I've never been able to run out of St. George's, you know. So that'd be good just to be there, you know, each year you watch, you know. I never really was too bothered by not running because, you know, 35 years of running. <laughs> I've done it a number of times, I've won it nine times. So it'd be good to come up, you know, and be healthy running, enjoy it, you know, see the crowd and just come through. So I'm looking forward to it. All right, well, congratulations. Yeah, man, thanks. The Bacardi Par 3 National Championships concluded at the Fairmont Southampton's Turtle Hill Golf Course on Sunday after the first round play on Saturday was completely washed out. Fraser Hunt and Tarika Rollicram were crowned the 2017 Bermuda Bacardi Par 3 National Male and Female Champions at the Turtle Hill Golf Course. Hunt was able to shoot a round of 54, with Jared Dillis finishing second after his 56, and Javon Dill finished third, shooting 61. Wallach Graham shot a round of 56, with Ann Simons finishing second, shooting 64. Fraser Hunt had these comments after his win. Obviously, after yesterday's win, rain, and everything, how did you think you would fare today in with, with obviously the green still a little, a little soggy and uh, how did you feel you had to approach it? Um, you know, we had a nice little fresh breeze coming off the ocean today, so everything, everything surprisingly dried up. I don't know what the grounds crew did, but um, the bunkers looked great um, and the greens, yeah, were surprisingly not that, not that soggy. So I came out ready to go. What did you think you would have to shoot today in order to come out on top? Um, you know, this is always a good test of golf up here. You probably got the best 18 approach shots on the 
on the island so the longer hitters aren't getting those freebie birdies you've got you've got to work for all your birdies out here so i, I figured around par par but maybe maybe one or two under where did you where did you feel as if you were um putting your uh, your best foot forward as far as your game for all of it coming together all around i had um started off really strong the first few holes had a little had a little hiccup on five and six and um knew i knew i had some work to make up but i was i was striking the ball well and um these greens here are beautiful so um yeah just got got the putter rolling made a few nice birdie putts and um got right back in there i thought i might need one or two more but um luckily luckily it held up you're you're more of a consistent type of golfer where you're <laughs> you're always at that around the mark a lot of times how do you keep that game going? How do you keep that consistency going? Um, gosh, that's a good question. Um, I'm consistent on my consistent days, I guess. But um, yeah, you know, I'm at that point in my golf career that uh, you know I'm trying to not take it too seriously. Um, just kind of enjoy the camaraderie. Um, Bermuda's a great place to be playing golf, and um, yeah, it's a great, great group of local golfers out here. So I just enjoy coming out, having a knock, and um, yeah, I'm known for irritating people by making lots of putts and having a really good short game when I'm not hitting it as well as everyone else. So um, yeah, I just had a, had a fun time out there just actually hitting some good greens and regulation and knocking some putts in today. How does the Bacardi Par 3 National Championship set you up for the World Par 3 National Championship or Par 3 Championship? Yeah, it is um, It's great to come out and win this tournament. It looks like there's only a group or two left out in the course and um, I don't think anyone's in my age group. So yeah. Um, it's a great event, what they've been doing here at Fairmont the last few years. I always enjoy getting out here. Um, I've been playing more, I've probably played more more at Fairmont this year than ever. They do a great job here, just keeping the course in great nick. And um, Paul and his team here just do a great job. So I'm looking forward to um, when that rolls around to hopefully still be hitting it well and give the big boys a, a run for their money. Race 8 of the Fat Tire Massive Mountain Bike Series was run at Ferry Reach in the East End. Race 8 of the Flying Collins Mountain Bike Series was staged at the Ferry Reach Park in the East End. In the male A division, Robin Horsfield crossed the line first, covering the seven laps in 119.59. Matthew Oliveira was second in 121.39. And Adam Kirk finished third, one lap down. The female novice winner was Randa Roberts, covering the four-lap distance in a time of 40.28.4. Erlinga Ingham was second, one lap down. And Belinda Castry finished in third. The veteran division saw Graham Gooch. Take the first place honors with Hans Hershey finishing second and Chris Roke rounding out the top three. Sarah Burnett was the only female veteran division racer, while in the male B division, it saw Ricky Souza, Blake Camara, and Janai Robinson finish one, two, and three. The male novice riders division was won by Gareth Fleming. Lando Burris was second and Sean Gravito finished in third. Blake Oliveira won the male 13 to 14 division with Finn Clarkson second and Lim Flannery finished in third. Megan Hands was the only female competitor in the 13 to 15 division, while the male 12 and under division was won by Odin Hines. Jonathan Trott was second and Gordon Smith finished in third. The female 12 and under division winner was Chelsea Lomas with Lindsay Hayward finishing in second. While following in his footsteps of his Bermuda Olympic hopeful brother, Matthew Lejour, John Lejour stood on top of the podium at a skiing event in Colorado. John Lejour finished on the podium competing in the President's Mongol Challenge at Telluride. John Lejour finished on top of the podium in the under-15 age group and fourth place overall with a score of 77.51 among 69 skiers. Only senior league play was able to be completed on Saturday despite inclement weather in Bermuda Netball Association action at Bernard Park. Robin Hood defeated the Phoenix Heat 37-28. Talila Lucas led Robin Hood with 22 goals, while Latina Simpson added 15 goals. Ebony Burgess scored all 28 goals for the Phoenix Heat. The Phoenix Flames defeated the Phoenix Blazing 14-8. Shonda Woods-Bow scored 8 goals, and Tiana Hayward added 6 goals for the Flames, while the Phoenix Blazing got 7 goals from Candria Romaine, with Tahira Hill adding the other goal. The Storm defeated the North Village Lady Rams 22-16. Zakaya Lewis scored 17 goals for the Storm, with Nabilia Nazir adding 4 goals, and Sonia Hall added the other. Jatora Trot scored 12 goals for the North Village Lady Rams, while Nicole Smith added 4 goals. 
There were plenty of goals in women's field hockey action at the National Sports Center on Sunday. The Budgers defeated the Longtails 6-0 in their match with Giselle Smith and Keisha Robinson both scoring twice. Renee Greenslade and Taylor Marlin added a goal each. The Ravens came from 3-0 down to draw 3-3 with the Canaries. The Canaries got two field goals off the stick of Abigail Machin, while Stephanie Surin added the other field goal. The Ravens got single field goals off the sticks of Molly O'Donnell, Patel Toby and Eloise Pynchon. The Swallows defeated the Sandpipers 11-0. They got hat-tricks from Claire Brady and Helen Clark. They also got two goals apiece from Donna Nicholson and Anthea Burke. Joe Haney scored the other. The Island Basketball League regular season is now over. We move into the playoffs and president of the league, Kenny Simons, gives us a breakdown of who will be playing who and his prediction of who he thinks will come out on top. All right, Kenny. Regular season over, Tsunami's top dogs, now it's playoff time. It's playoff time, baby. Yes, and as you see, Tsunami are the number one seed, and they will be playing on uh, Wednesday. Number two, Flyboys are playing uh, Cool Kings. Number three, Thundercats will be playing Island Ballers. And what I might also say, say is that Tsunami and Island Ballers are the two new teams that are just coming to the into the expansion of the Island Basketball League, sponsored by One Island Basketball League. Uh, Rim Rockers got the number four, they will be playing Twisters. And, and, and we're looking for actually all great games, all great matchups. Well, it's been a long season, but an exciting one. Obviously, with one team going 15 and 3, they were 15 and 0 for quite a while, and then the last three games. Yeah. Do the Hoop Stars think they can pull off the upset? I believe Hoop Stars is probably the most dangerous matchup for them because they have Jonathan Lowe playing for them who matches up well. Actually, the Beaks match up well with the Beaks. So it's going to be a very interesting game for the Tsunamis who could possibly go out in the first round. Possibly. But the Tsunamis have great guard, guard um, great veterans, and they seem to always pull through. So Hoop Stars is a very iffy type game very iffy type game fly boys cool kings again another it could go either way right. um if both teams show up i always say you if, if the team shows up on that night anybody can go out done the catch led by chris crumpler probably the island's best basketball player um leading his young group of guys very outstanding team very dangerous they will be taking on Island Ballers, who uh, had a really good year this year. And um, with, with uh, what we've noticed in the last few games, last few weeks of the league, is that the young man, Jamonja Trutt, has been causing a lot with his length and shot blocking ability. And also with Omar Wolf, who actually got, who set the Island Basketball League record with 43 points have become a dangerous tandem for Island Ballers. The Twisters will be taking on Rim Rockers. Twisters have actually beat Rim Rockers twice this season, so this is a game that can actually go either way. Rim Rockers, if they have their full squad, can be cause problems for Twisters. And then Chris Horward, who plays for, for um, Rim Rockers, very dangerous guard, real attacking player. And for Twisters, they have Ja'Kai Clark, who's a dangerous three-point shooter, led by the veteran also Lee Green, and also Alex Butterfield, I must say, the big man has had an outstanding season, really outstanding season, also a candidate for MVP for the regular season. Yeah. So, oh, you want me? Yes, I'll give it up to the Mamba Tucker. One of my assistants also helping me also run the, the one Island Basketball League. Okay, um, Kenny's pretty much said pretty much a good breakdown of all the teams. Um, I would have to say, based on experience, if we're going into the playoffs, um, I would say Tsunamis have an edge over everybody else. Aside from the fact that they went on a 14, 15 year run, um, basically they have the best balance as far as talent wise. They have a good good center, good power forward, good, good small forward, shooting guard, and, and point guard. Where all the other teams, you'll notice that 
at all five positions, they don't have a solid man at each of those positions. So I would say they have the edge over everybody else. However, at the same time, I have to say that given their age, the age probably could work against them coming on to players when, of course, you're playing each team one game and we get to the finals. If they make it to the finals, you're talking about the best two out of three series. So, of course, it's, it starts to take its toll on your body after a while. Um, so I would say give, give or take the biggest competition, I would have to say it would probably be Thundercats because, of course, then you're going to match youth versus age and wisdom. But like Kenny said, at this stage, anybody can beat anybody. Um, but some of these teams I favor more than others. <laughs> Yeah, as, as my colleagues uh, said, I agree as well. Uh, this league has probably been one of the better basketball leagues. Uh, one, the one Communications Island Basketball League has, uh, has definitely outdone itself this year. Um, we've got teams that across the board, uh, as you can see by the standings, they're not that far apart. And with that, that means exciting games. And um, I just hope to see the best team win. And like my colleague over here, I am a little bit biased towards other ones, but <laughs> I'm hoping that uh, everything works out. Now that the playoffs are underway, it's one and done, where the Flyboys, the defending champions, and Rimrockers have advanced to the Final Four. In the opener on the night, the defending champions Flyboys edged the Court Kings 62-61 in a seesaw battle. Jerron Haley was the top scorer for the Flyboys with 29 points, while Jericho Tucker scored 21 points for the Court Kings. In the nightcap, the Rimrockers defeated the Twisters 59-53. Aaron Camerao was the top scorer for the Rimrockers with 22 points, while Alex Butterfield also scored 22 points, but his were for the Twisters. Bermuda, listen up. D-Music is here exclusively for Digicel customers. Open up a world of music at your fingertips and access millions of songs from free. With D-Music, you can easily search for your favorite artists and create playlists to fit your lifestyle. Plus, you have the option to download music to your device so you can find a song for any moment, even when offline. D-Music comes with one gig of free data to stream and download songs without it impacting your data usage. That's 32 hours worth of music. Visit us in-store or online to see how you can get D-Music today. Emerson Carrington, a Bermuda umpire, was busy in the final match between Cayman Islands and Argentina in the World Cricket League Division 5 qualifier as they issued several LBW rulings and several runouts. Emerson Carrington and his umpiring partner was busy as the ICC World Cricket League Division 5 qualifier between Cayman Islands and Argentina was easily won by Cayman Islands in brilliant sunshine and high humidity over in Argentina. Argentina won the toss and elected to bat. They lost two early wickets, including day one man of the match, Matias Paterini. He went for three. That saw them slump to 19 for two. The locals struggled and were all out for 96 in 36 overs. In the Argentina innings, the umpires adjudged three LBWs and two runouts. Cayman went to bat prior to the lunch break and came out swinging with 25 off the first three overs. However, Argentina pulled them back and at one point in time, Cayman were 53 for 5 before Danilo Innes scored 28 runs and Conroy Wright scored 24 to guide the tourist home. In their innings... The umpires are judged two LBWs, a runout, and a stumping. Noah Brown competed in the Chicago Open in the sport of squash. Unfortunately, he bowed out in the first round. Noah Brown took to the court for the $150,000 men's Windy City Open 2017 at the University Club in Chicago. In the first qualifying round, Brown would take on Niklas Müller from Sweden. Brown would go down 3-1 in his match that lasted 32 minutes. Müller won the first game 11-3 before Brown would win the second game 11-7. Müller would take the 2-1 lead when he won the third game 11-9 and he would close out the match winning the fourth game 11-7. Open up a world of music at your fingertips and access millions of songs from free with D-Music, exclusively from Digicel. With D-Music, you can stream and download songs and create playlists of your favorite artists to fit your lifestyle. Whether you're working out at the gym, getting ready for a Friday night, or just chilling at home, 
The music comes with one gig of free data to stream and download songs without it impacting your data usage. That's 32 hours worth of music. Visit us in store or online to see how you can get D Music today. That's it for another Digicel Sports Show right here on islandstats.com. We want to thank our sponsors, Digicel and the Department of Youth and Sport. I'm Earl Based and do enjoy the rest of your evening.